I found a video called What Motivates Outspoken Atheists, which seems like very good material for this channel. I don't know what he says, I'm doing that thing again where I just sort of pick something and start responding to it. It's worked out horribly in the past, so it seems like the right decision. Uh, good morning YouTube friends, got a quick question this morning. You couldn't wait until you got home? Why are you driving and making a video at the same time? Keep your eyes on the road. This makes you drive worse and make a worse video. What motivates outspoken atheists? These days, uh, the lulls, mostly. I mean, it's kind of an argument nobody really seems to care that much about anymore. I just kind of find it fun. I like the topic. I always find some sort of new argument that blows me away with its absolute stupidity. Are you an atheist that actively talks to others and ultimately tries to convince others to doubt God or reject the existence of God? Uh, no, not really. I make my videos, and mostly the point of that is to make my videos. If they happen to make someone doubt God, I'm not broken up about it, but it's not really the point. In an offline life, the topic really doesn't come up at all. If someone were to start arguing with me, trying to convert me to believe in their God, then I would argue back. But I'd rather just talk about, like, gardening, home improvement, whether the queen's a reptoid or not, the usual kind of stuff. What motivates that? What motivates the outspoken atheist? Okay, well, towards the start of my channel, when I was more of what you would call an outspoken atheist, outside of my videos as well, what motivated me was the very concerning revelation that people suck at critical thought. I realized that people are willing to believe some very stupid things for very stupid reasons and never once stop to think about it properly. And that concern extended beyond religion. I mean, okay, I kind of started taking it seriously with religion, but it's pretty obvious that if billions of people are willing to just sort of believe whatever they feel like because they feel like it, end of story, and then make up some post hoc justification after the fact to explain it to other people, and then somehow eventually convince themselves that they actually buy their own stupid argument, that that aspect of human nature has some pretty severe consequences for a lot of different things in the world. And maybe it's a good idea that we try to encourage people to do a little better, to be skeptical of everything they think, to really consider why they believe what they take for granted, to really ask themselves if they actually have good reasons to think it's true, or if they're just believing it because their parents said so, or the TV programs they happen to watch said so, or the media said so, or other people around them in their community said so. I think that's a worthy endeavor. I think it's useful for the health of a society. Now, that's obviously not what motivates everybody, not exactly. There are a lot of people who were raised religious and they feel like it had some sort of negative effect on them in one way or another, and so they're against it because of that. I don't know, there are many reasons, but those are probably two of the bigger ones. Another one's that some people just like to argue I mean, it's a very old traditional pastime. It's been practiced every place through every period of human history about some topic or another, oftentimes about God. And why people would be specifically interested in this topic? I mean, ask them. There's lots and lots of reasons why you might be. It's as worthy a topic of conversation as any other area of, broadly speaking, philosophy. Increasingly on YouTube and all other outlets, there are atheist philosophers, atheist scientists, atheist comics, who are aggressively, aggressively attacking the idea of God in general and the Bible in specific. Increasingly, you say. I'm not convinced that's true. I feel like the atheist conversation is very much less important than it used to be on YouTube. It used to be a pretty huge subculture here. If you pay attention, you'll oftentimes notice, like, if you just happen across a channel at random, so often it's someone who was involved in the atheist community back in the day, or at least watched it, or overlapped with it in some way, or was on the Christian side of things, or whatever. The atheist thing is deeply embedded into YouTube culture. But the actual topic nowadays I don't feel is nearly as important or prominent or influential as it was. But you might be right, there was a very prolonged decline in this kind of content. And maybe it has kind of picked up a little bit since then, in the past couple years. So, yeah, okay, I'll give it to you. And question arises in my mind, why? Well, I've given you about as much of a why as you need, I think. I mean, if you ask why do people build model trains, it's basically the same kind of a why. It's, uh, well, that's what they're interested in, so that's what they do. Pretty much covers it, I think. Video over, right? We'd all agree that we have a very short... Penis. Life. Oh. 
<clears throat> mine's mine's uh, average length. The life we have right now is very short. Yeah, by a certain standard, it is. It's still long enough you gotta find some way to pass the time, though. And tossing thoughts around with your fellow human beings doesn't seem like an unreasonable choice. And I understand there's some people who kinda get a little bit too fixated on things, who maybe get a little bit obsessive, who maybe pass a little bit more time talking about this stuff with people than is healthy. But that's not unique to atheism, that's the same with everything. Pretty much just a part of the human condition. Especially in light of what happens after death. The atheist would believe that after death, there's nothing. Well, for them personally. I don't know if I have to clarify this, but there's still plenty of stuff after I'm gone. I just won't be a part of it. Which, to be fair, is already the case for almost everything that ever happens. But I'm still very interested and concerned about a lot of things that happen that I'm not directly involved in. Again, that's kind of part of human nature. All conscious thought would cease forever. Lights out. Just like a dog would fall over and die after a heart attack, so a man falls over and dies. Lights out. No more conscious thought. Forever. Alright, seems you've pretty much grasped the concept of death. That's a decent start, but where are you going with this? And that this life is but, they'd probably agree with the Bible passage, is but a vapor. Nah, it's really more of a plasma. It's here today, and it's gone tomorrow. So my question, what motivates you? Yeah, you asked that already. And I answered it already. Why are we still talking? What motivates the aggressive, outspoken atheist? All right, buddy, come on. We're a third of the way through the video. I really hope you're not going to ask this question the whole way through. Remember what I said about driving while making your video, making you make a worse video? See, right now, I am a believer in God. I'm a believer in Jesus. Never would have guessed. I believe he rose from the dead having paid for my sins, and my soul's trust is in him. What a surprise. That I'm going to have a joyous and glorious eternity when I close my eyes in death. Right, you believe the thing. I'm a believer. Right, that would be what that would imply, yes. Now, to the atheist, if, if there is no God, and it's all just made up. When I die, I'm not going to heaven because there is no heaven. When I die, I'm going to lose all conscious thought forever. You said that already too. I understand the premise. You've laid it out real clear more than once now. If we really live in an atheistic universe, there is no God. And if there's no afterlife, which is a different claim, there are atheists who believe in an afterlife. But if both of those things are true, then your mind just sort of ends when you die. And if you're right, it doesn't. That's the premise. I understand the premise. It'd be kind of hard for me not to because you keep saying it. I think I'm doing a pretty good job following along with you here, buddy. So where are you taking me? Now, if you spend countless hours researching and developing argumentation, or for the comic, developing you know, funny things to say that try to break down the foundation of my faith, and one day I just say, hey, I, I don't believe in God anymore. You won me over. Hooray. When I die, if I die a skeptic, or if I die an atheist, I will lose all conscious thought forever. Will you? I thought you believed that if you die an atheist, something else happens. Are you saying if you die an atheist and we're right? So whether I believe in God, or whether I don't believe in God, I'm going to lose all conscious thought forever. Okay, so basically, if there's no afterlife, there's no afterlife. And if atheism is right, there's no afterlife. That's where we've got to so far. It's been three and a half minutes, and that's how much we've covered. We're 50% through the video. The atheist, the agnostic, the believer, we all have the same destiny. We're all going to lose conscious thought forever in everything we've ever done, everything we've ever said, everything we ever meant to anybody is going to be forgotten forever. Yes, if there's no afterlife, there's no afterlife. I understand. I promise you, I understand. Please believe me. I understand. I got you, bro. Is this the whole argument? What do you want from me? What do you want me to take from this? Darkness forever.
darkness? No, wait, 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 wait. Darkness is something you experience. The lack of experience is not darkness. Lacking a mind, being dead, does not mean you're experiencing darkness. I don't know if you're trying to be literal or it's some kind of figurative thing, but this actually confuses a lot of people. For some reason, there's a lot of people who just cannot imagine not experiencing things. Apparently, these people have never had a very deep sleep or been blackout drunk. That's what being dead is like, except even more so. Absence. Not darkness, and I think it's worth being very clear about that. So, what motivates you to spend hour upon hour toiling and arguing and thinking about God and Jesus? Well, you keep making videos about it. I'm alive, you're alive, we're in the real world. People's thoughts and opinions and beliefs shape their actions, and their actions shape the world. People's critical thinking skills and lack thereof, and their valuation of the concept of critical thinking itself, really shape the world. And I gotta live here. And so does my family, so does my kid, all my friends, their families, their kids. Now personally, at this point in my life, I don't really take Christianity that seriously as an issue. As I say, I like the argument. I find it fun to talk about, but a lot of the time, and I don't know if this is necessarily clear all the time, what I'm really arguing for and about is employing solid reasoning in your day-to-day -day life and applying it to everything. Religion happens to just be a very convenient springboard to that much broader issue. For some people, the religion aspect is much more front and center in their concerns, and that's fine. But for me, if I actually want to convince anyone of anything, which is rarely, to be honest, my goal, that's what I would actually want to convince them of. I don't really care if you believe in God. I really don't. I mean, it really doesn't bother me much or affect me much. Everyone out there has some kind of belief that I disagree with, or that I think is a blind spot, or that I think they reached through poor reasoning, and that's their business, really. What I want is just for people to think about how they think, to question their basic assumptions, to, uh, you know, before they make an assertion, stop and think, am I really sure about this? Why am I sure about this? If this channel has a purpose beyond the entertainment factor, I think that's probably what it is. Why do you put so much effort? Why do you spend so much of your little time thinking about God and how to refute him? Why does anyone spend time talking about anything? It's such a silly question. You believe a thing? I think you're wrong. I think your reasons probably suck. Not that you've really told me what they are, but I bet they do. And I just think it's kind of annoying when people have crappy reasons for stuff. I don't think it does anyone any good, and more importantly, it just kind of bothers me. I've presented a bunch of different reasons to you, and you know, no one of these is mutually exclusive. All these different reasons and motivations contribute, you know, and some days it's more one than the other. I mean, I'm a person with a hobby. I have an interest, sometimes my reasons for being interested vary, sometimes my level of interest itself varies. It's not exactly some great mystery. I do the stuff I do for probably pretty much the same reason you do anything you do. You know, why do you build a fence? This life is short, you have an infinity to look forward to. That fence is only gonna be there for a few years, what the fuck's the point? That's one infinityth of your life. So basically it's zero. It means literally nothing, why do you bother? Isn't that the same kind of bullshit question? Oh, you're trying to convince people to vote for your guy for town council because he can do a better job replacing the roads and building the library? But if he wins, he's only going to be in office for four years, and if he builds the library, it's just going to fall apart again. This life is insignificant. This life is but a vapor compared to infinity. Why do you do anything? Why do you apply this stupid-ass reasoning to us and not to yourself? What motivates you to do that? What motivates you to repeat yourself a hundred times in a six-minute video? See, for the Christian... I believe you were made as an image bearer, right? You were made, you were made special, above the value of an animal walking around in the woods. And so what, therefore you have some sort of motivation to not just sit alone silently in a white room doing nothing until you die? Suddenly it becomes infinitely, divinely worthwhile to have random conversations about ideas? Suddenly any given philosophical discussion, not even necessarily related to your religion, just in general, is worth having, whereas before it was totally valueless despite the fact that you would have really liked to do it, and you had something to say? You know, I gotta be honest, all this stuff people come up with about, uh, why do you talk about God so much? It doesn't mean anything. Your, your life just sort of ends at the end. I mean, I've heard this so many times, and it always comes off as just a massive whine. Why are you arguing with me? I wish you would just stop, and you know what? You should just stop, because it doesn't have infinite consequences if you argue with me, so you should just shut up. Uh, no. Not gonna do it.
No conversation has infinite consequences. No topic of discussion is infinitely meaningful or impactful. Doesn't matter. I like to think about stuff. I like to talk. This is one of the things I like to think and talk about. I'm going to say what I want. I'm going to talk about what interests me. And uh, if you don't like it or you don't understand it, you can go fuck yourself. I believe that you were made a special creature with special transcendent qualities like free will and consciousness and a sense of justice and right and wrong, that you are valuable and that you have an eternal undying soul and, deter and based upon what you do with Jesus will determine <clears throat> where you spend eternity. Yeah, so it sounds like what you're saying is the only things that matter are the things that have infinite consequences. Those are the only things you should think about or talk about or try to convince people of or just do. And so anything you do or think or say that is not directly related to Jesus or the afterlife or God, if you're not talking about that 24-7, either through trying to convince people or praying or whatever, it's utterly meaningless and your motivations for doing it are totally incomprehensible because it doesn't have infinite consequences. That's your argument argument, it's goddamn stupid. You would never apply this argument to 99% of the stuff in your life, the vast majority of the stuff you talk about. You might feel good for that one minute you spend teaching your kid how to roast a marshmallow and make a s'more, and that's it? Oh my god, it doesn't have infinite consequences? Well, you should never do it then. What could possibly motivate you to do it? There's no conceivable reason to do anything that doesn't last forever. Stuff that doesn't last forever has no value to anyone ever, even in the moment. Changing people's ideas now in the real world means nothing to anyone because eventually the sun's just gonna die and then who cares I guess then why bother getting up in the morning your ideology is pure unadulterated nihilism about everything except for talking about Jesus if it's not that one thing it doesn't matter period the world now doesn't matter throw it in the garbage nothing anyone ever does matters it's not permanent so it means nothing burn it all. That's the attitude you're espousing here. And you know what? Even if my eternal afterlife isn't on the line, I'm gonna say so. Because it matters now. So I believe that eternity is at stake for you. You could go to heaven, having your sins been forgiven, having been reconciled to God through the, the cross of Christ. He died for your sins, so if you trust in him, you'll be with God forever. Yeah, very, very important. Infinitely consequential. Did your car ever break down? Did you ever have a conversation with your mechanic about what was wrong with it? Waste of time. Impermanent. You should have just had the thing crushed. Right? A man originally created to fellowship with God in paradise on earth. Yet, God allowing free will, man inevitably... Okay, we're going to fast forward this because I think you're going to tell me the whole damn story, which I'm quite aware of and has absolutely nothing to do with your argument. Everybody falls into sin, man separated from God. Christ steps in as the mediator between God and man, takes man's sin upon himself, dies on the cross, so a holy God and a sinful man can come together. Anyhow, so I believe eternity is at stake for whether or not you believe in Jesus. But for me, to the atheist, my eternal destiny is no different. I don't care about your eternal destiny at all. I think eternal destiny is a ridiculous concept. I think what matters is right now, right here, you talking, me talking. This matters now. At some point, it won't. Soon enough, I'll pretty much forget I ever made this video. At some point in the future, everyone will. And at some point, your video and my video will both be deleted off the internet forever. After that, the internet will be deleted forever. But it still means something to me right now that I'm telling you that your ideas suck. That your worldview drains everything of meaning. It hijacks the concept of meaning and assigns it only to the religion. And everything outside of that is completely destroyed. Made worthless. At least that's the goal. It's disgraceful. My eternal destiny is no different as a believer than it would be as a non-believer. So why do you spend so much time and so much effort trying to convince others to doubt or reject God? Look at this. The only reason you can possibly see for anyone convincing anyone of anything, talking to anyone about anything, is eternal destiny. If literally infinite consequences don't hinge on the result, people should just never talk to each other, should never exchange ideas, should never criticize one another's ideas, should never try to convince each other of stuff, should never analyze their agreements or disagreements or reasons. You know, sometimes you just want to have a conversation. Sometimes that's motivation enough. If it has no consequence outside of the 
hour you sit around talking about something, that's fine. That doesn't make it meaningless. It has meaning in that hour, and it has meaning in the heads of the people who had the conversation for potentially a long time afterwards. And it can change the way people see the world or see themselves, and it can change the way they interact with the world. It has all kinds of meaning. It has cascading meaning all through society. When millions of these conversations happen and people change their opinions this way, that way, that's what human society is. That's all of history, is people's minds changing and shifting and the alteration of prevailing attitudes and opinions and beliefs. That's what we do. That's what we are. It doesn't cease to mean anything at all now just because it doesn't mean something forever. How can you not see how destructive this element of your worldview is? How can you not understand how it destroys meaning, how it robs people of the concept and locks it away never to be used again, except in its own service? Can you really not see what would happen if people actually believed this garbage instead of just paying lip service to it like you're doing right now while you do all kinds of other impermanent things that matter to you? You know, you make this video as if you think it should be a convincing reason for me to stop voicing my opinion on your religion, and instead you just give me another reason to do it. You make your religion look worse, you make it seem much more important to say something about it. Because if people believe this garbage, they're gonna go down a very dark, miserable path. It's gonna have a real-world effect on them and on the world around them. You know, do what you want, believe what you want, but maybe sometimes try to take a step back and listen to yourself. When in the end, it doesn't matter whether you do or whether you don't, you will have an eternity of lights out, no conscious thought forever. So why do you do it? What motivates you? Or who motivates you? And that's the end of his video. That got more serious than I thought it was gonna. You know, sometimes it's hard to articulate, especially in a way that these people will understand. What I find so obnoxious about this kind of belief system, people sometimes think it's just an objection to the idea of God or hell or something like that, but it goes a lot deeper to the basic philosophy of the religion. I find the whole thing rotten to the core. The entire approach to life and the assignment of meaning and value, it's a way of thinking and acting that is just completely alien to me. It's so focused on death. What'll happen after you die? The only thing that matters is what happens after you die. Your life doesn't matter, only your death matters. Nothing in your life matters unless it has impact after your death. Oh, you think this thing you're doing right now, uh, enjoying time with your family, having a philosophical discussion with someone, eating a sandwich, you think that matters? You think that has some value? No! Stop thinking about that. The only thing that matters is death. Think about death more. Death, death, death. No! What's important now is important now. What interests me now interests me now. The argument we're having now matters now. Why? Because we're both engaged with it. That's it. And that's enough. That's meaning. That makes the thing mean something. Yes, it's transient. Yes, it has finite impact. Oh well, I'm not gonna deny the meaning of everything to suit you. I'm not gonna pretend that meaning as I perceive it comes from anything other than my own interpretations in my own brain. I'm not gonna spend my life focusing on my death to make you happy. Nothing I do is to make you happy. I don't even know your channel name, guy I'm arguing with. You don't matter. Your opinions don't matter to me. Your priorities don't matter to me. Your insistence that everything has to be infinitely meaningful doesn't matter to me. It means nothing to me. Go away now. As for the rest of you, thank you for watching. If you would, please give the video a like and click subscribe if you haven't. Huge thanks, as always, to every one of my supporters on every platform. If you want early access, sign up to the email list, list.logic.com, and I'll see you next time.